most of the cost of a hurdy-gurdy, which is an expensive musical instrument, is actually the labour cost, the build time. It's mainly made of wood. This is one I attempted to build myself at the very low end of the spectrum, but uh, it illustrates the, these points. As you can see, there's a sound box, there's a crank which turns a wheel, which rubs on a set of strings, and then under here, the keys act on the strings to fret them, rather like, a bit like playing a guitar. You can have up to four strings in here as well. Um, drones and trompet strings, and you can also have sympathetic strings. So some girdies are extremely complex. There's also this buzz system, which here is 3D printed. You basically put a tension sideways on this string, which makes this bistable, if you like. And as the string vibrates, this buzzes against the deck when you accelerate the cranking speed. That is the rhythm section, if you like, and that's one of the very unusual features of a hurdy-gurdy. But you can see how complex it is, and you can see why they cost, when made in nice quality woods, thousands of pounds, even at the budget end of the spectrum. The main structure of the digi-gurdy is made from laser-cut three mil ply panels. This keeps the cost down. Here's a box of panels to make about five digigurdies of the standard design. Also, functionally exactly the same, there is a heavy metal styled version here. And here's a set of panels for that. And as you can see, in fact, the key box is exactly the same. It's just fixed into place. And the idea of that is it just might appeal to younger audience. So my original plan was to build something more portable than this that could I just learn some tunes on. So that would mean, in other words, like a key box. So inspired by these small USB MIDI keyboards, which are very portable, I thought, well, could you make one that's like the key box, this, just this part of the hurdy-gurdy, make it electronic and make it a MIDI device with a USB MIDI output. And then you could take it anywhere, you could take it on holiday and um, just practice learning tunes. Obviously it wouldn't have the crank system. I did actually build an electronic key box, USB MIDI key box, but then everybody asked me to build a full-size hurdy-gurdy. So this is the top-end model, but it illustrates the main points. It's made from laser-cut ply. It's a simplified sandbox design, which is much easier to assemble. Um, the remaining parts are mainly 3D printed, the keys, the screen surround. Um, it also has a standard MIDI output. And the microcontroller actually sits under this panel. And you see here are the keys, which have been acetone polished. So emerging from the end of the key box, we have a USB cable with extender. That's the USB MIDI output. It also has a standard five pin in socket, MIDI output. And you can also plug in uh, a wireless Bluetooth MIDI transmitter, such as the ones made by Yamaha. Um, or there's also one called the Widdy Master. We'll plug in there and that will transmit MIDI via Bluetooth to an attached device, such as an iPad. And the crank is uh, difficult to make in a low cost way. Others have tried and they're no longer available. I actually use a gear motor designed for robots and this acts as a dynamo when you crank the handle, which is actually commonly available as a fishing reel accessory. When you crank the handle, it produces a voltage which can be uh, measured by the microcontroller. The microcontroller is a teensy board at the moment. It sits under this panel for easy access and it plugs into the custom made printed circuit board here, slots in there and here it is and this is the screen which sits here again just a straight OLED screen available in blue or white and I'll now show you how this works because it has several different modes of operation so first I'm going to use it as a USB MIDI device. So here's the USB cable. Here's an adapter to an iPad. 
on the iPad will run some commercially available software called BS16i. So I've plugged it in to the iPad and you'll notice it's powered from the iPad. So here are the latest version. And the keys can be used to navigate the menus. Do you also remember the previous settings? They're the tunings for each string. They can be adjusted with an octave up or down button here. There's also a capo on one of the strings that can be engaged digitally there. So let's say we're just going to accept our last settings. Okay, here's a demo. Here's the connected iPad. We've got six channels for our uh, set of strings and they're all adjustable uh, from an audio library. The other main feature of this is that the keyboard is removable so you can use it as a more compact portable practice keyboard. So to remove the keyboard, just slide it back, this plug disengages, lift it up a little and it comes off. There you are. Now you may be wondering, when you're in wireless mode, how does the GERDI power itself, because we have a transmitter here and it's not plugged in via a USB cable into anything. Well, if I detach the key box again, you'll notice this here. Now if you undo this cover, Underneath, you will find one of these, unmodified. And it's a little mobile phone power bank. It's rechargeable through the small USB socket and you draw power from the large one. So, if you take the same USB lead and plug it in there, the device will now self-power. So it's portable as a key box and it's and wireless and it's portable and wireless when attached to this as well. So you can see here I have a Yamaha Bluetooth MIDI transmitter plugged in here and it's going through the boot up menu as before. And now, if we open the Bluetooth menu here, it's looking for Bluetooth MIDI devices. MDBTO1, this is the Yamaha device, right? Connected. So let's see if it plays. On this top of the range version we have an extra feature in that it has an internal soundboard and power supply in the base so it will still run connected to a PC or an iPad through USB MIDI it will still run via the MIDI socket here into which I've got a wireless Bluetooth transmitter plugged at the moment the key box still detaches, um, but also you have a headphone socket here and a data link cable sending data from this microcontroller to the sound card in the main body. And then there's a charge port here 
for the battery pack. You can even take it to the office to play in your lunch break. After working on the full-sized hurdy-gurdy with detachable key box for a while, I did actually also revisit the original concept, which was a, a fun portable key box to learn some tunes on, inspired really by these small USB MIDI keyboards. And this is my take on that. This is the Nano, and you can see it could actually be entirely injection molded from plastic, potentially. It has the same software and performance as the uh, more expensive version. Octave keys, capo key, computer under here, same key layout, correct key layout, um, same screen, same menus, and it's connected via a USB MIDI connection to something like an iPad here, running the same software I was using before. So this could represent an entry level device to people just interested in hurdy gurdies who can't afford the very expensive real thing.